Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Welcome to my lecture series on main group chemistry. In my last lecture, I was discussing about uh, the structure and bonding concepts used in main group chemistry. While discussing structure and bonding aspects, I had mentioned about VACPR theory and also I introduced the term steric number and also I discussed uh, the molecules having steric number 2 to 6 and 2 to 7. And now let me discuss on molecules having both bonded pairs and lone pairs. So, in case of uh, uh, steric number 2, there are no lone pairs, only bonded pairs are there. So, we can for example, beryllium hydride or CO2, one can write the structure conveniently. In case of beryllium, we have 2 electrons here coming from one electron each. So, that means essentially uh, one electron from hydrogen will combine with one electron from beryllium to form a covalent bond. Similarly, another electron from beryllium will combine with hydrogen to form BH bond. So, it is a linear geometry is there and another example is CO2, one can also write uh, using this method. So, linear geometry will be there or one can also write something like this. In case of uh, steric number 3, we come across two types of molecules having no lone pairs that is BF3 or SO3. We can have two bonded pair and lone pair. In that case, examples are SO2 and O3. So, in this case what happens essentially we have the central atom and we have peripheral atoms, peripheral atoms have denoted by P, central atom A and we have a lone pair here. So, this type of molecules will be there. So, they have bent shape and here angles may not be not necessarily 120, here it may be little less uh, to accommodate this lone pair. These essentially less than 120 whereas this angle will be little more. And in case of steric number 4, we come across three kinds of molecules. One is 0 lone pairs or having one lone pair or having two lone pairs. Let us look into the molecules having three bonded pairs and one lone pair. The example is NH3 are all tertiary amines and also the trivalent compounds of all group 15 elements such as nitrogen, phosphorus, arsenic, antimony and bismuth, uh, PH3, tertiary phosphine, PCL3, PF3, HCl3 all are examples of having three bonded pair and lone pair and have a pyramidal structure. So, in this case N So, that means here essentially N has 3 covalent bonds with 3 hydrogens and this unutilized lone pair will be occupying one of the positions. The here geometry is tetrahedral. Shape is pyramidal. Okay. So, this is how one can write having 3 bonded pairs plus 1 lone pair, whereas steric number 4. Let us look into uh, the steric number 4 having 2 bonded pairs and 2 lone pairs. Uh, examples are plenty water, H2S, SF2, I3 plus etcetera. So, let us look into 
the case of water so this is how one can write uh, the geometry for uh, oxygen in water showing the tetrahedral geometry and here while considering the shape while deciding the shape of the molecule one can ignore the lone pair so it has a v shape or bent shape the geometry is again tetrahedral and shape is bent shape Besides example, other examples are H2S, SF2, I3, I3 plus. Let us look into I3 plus. In I3 plus is interesting, uh, one of the iodine will be central atom here. So, First, let us count the number of electrons using Lewis method. So, here in counting, uh, either we can count the all the valence electrons of the central atom and just one electron from the peripheral atoms or we can count everything and try to satisfy the octet. Either way, one can write it. Now, I will show you uh, just omitting all the electrons of the peripheral atoms, but considering only one electron that makes a covalent bond through sharing with the central atom. So, now we have I has 7 electrons and these two will be giving 2 electrons. So, 9 electrons since it has a positive charge 1 electron has to be deducted. So, we have 8 electrons that means we have 4 pairs of electrons are there. So, this is our steric number. In this one, in this one uh, essentially it cannot have now this kind of linear geometry it is not possible. So, this is wrong. So, this is how immediately you will come to know that this is not the right way of writing. So, now first write the central atom and put the lone pair here and put these peripheral atoms. So, this is the I 3 plus I 3 plus the central iodine has the tetrahedral geometry and it has two bond pairs and two lone pairs. So, if you do any mistake here, we should be able to correct it simply by looking into the steric number. Steric number will guide you in writing the precise geometry and also knowing the correct shape of the molecule or ion. Okay, let us look into uh, PCL5. PCL5 has a trigonal bipyramidal geometry, PF5 can also be considered. So, here uh, P plus 5 Cl. So, P has a total of uh, S 2 P 3. So, we have 5 electrons are there. It has S 2 P 3 electronic configuration plus each chlorine is giving 1 electron. So, we have a total of 5 coming from 5 chlorines. So, we have a 10 electrons. We have a total of 10 electrons divided by 2 5 is the steric number. Now, we know the steric number is 5. Now, with steric number 5, the geometry that is supposed to be considered is trigonal bipyramidal. And now, place so this is how we can write the structure of PCL5 molecule which has trigonal bipyramidal geometry. Let us look into another case of steric number 5, but having one lone pair and four bonded pair. The example that I have given is SF4. Uh, let us look into the SF4 molecule here, how it will have that kind of structure and shape. So, in case of SF4, we know that steric number is 5. So, let us determine that one. We have 6 electrons are there from uh, sulfur because it is S 2 P 4. 
similar to oxygen and 4 electrons are coming one each from fluorine atoms. So, it is 6 plus 4 equals 10 by 2 equals 5 is the steric number. In this one what we have is 4 SF bonds are there. So, 4 bonded pairs are there plus 1 lone pair is there. So, first let us write the geometry and then we should consider where this lone pair should be positioned. Okay. So, now we have two options one is we can place lone pair here or we can keep in the axial position. If you keep the lone pair in axial position it makes angles of 90 with all the equatorial atoms whereas, if you place here it makes 120 angle with the 2 and 90 degree with the 2. So, by placing this one here the molecule can gain extra stability and also lone pairs can get more space to be positioned here. As a result SF4 has this kind of structure. So, this one it appears like seesaw that is the reason uh, always the shape of SF4 is recognized as having seesaw structure. Of course, it is not exactly uh, having a seesaw structure essentially they are little bit bent uh, to give more space for these lone pairs these are little bit bent towards away from the their mean position this is the actual structure of uh, SF4 molecule. So, in case of uh, uh, CLF3 we have a different situation we have steric number is 5, but we have 2 lone pairs and 3 bonded pairs let us try to calculate and see whether it is correct or not. CLF3 the central atom is chlorine. So, chlorine is contributing 7 electrons and fluorine atoms are giving 1 electron each. So, we have again 10 electrons total and steric number is 5. So, now again the geometry is trigonal bipyramidal. So, now we have 2 lone pairs uh, taking the hint from SF4 it is convenient to place them in equatorial position. So, that the repulsion can be minimum. So, we shall place here lone pairs and remaining fluorine atoms can be placed to axial position one in equatorial position and here the geometry is trigonal bipyramidal. shape is if we ignore this it appears like T molecules the shape is T shape. So, this is how it called as having T shape essentially. So, these are not considered so it appears like having T shape. So, this is how one can also write correct structure for CLF3 showing 3 bonded pairs and 2 lone pairs. Another case is in case of steric number 5 is having 3 lone pairs and 2 bonded pairs. The example uh, I am going to consider here of course, I have given examples of XCF2, xenon difluoride and IF2 minus and I3 minus. Let us look into I3 minus we discussed I3 plus let us look into I3 minus now. So, in I 3 minus let us count electrons we have 3 and the central one will be one of the iodine. So, that will give 7 electrons and remaining 2 L iodines will give 1 electron each and plus we have a negative charge. So, total again 10 electrons are there 10 by 2 equals 5 is the steric number. So, here what we have is uh, 3 2 bonded pairs are there because we have 2 I I bonds plus we have 3 lone pairs. First let us write trigonal bipyramidal geometry as we wrote before. So, 
So this is how we can write. And now to minimize the repulsion between the lone pairs, what we should do is we should place all the lone pairs in the equatorial position like this and remaining two iodine atoms can be placed here and this is the structure of I 3 minus. So, here again it is geometries, geometry trigonal bipyramidal shape linear. Okay. And similarly one can write I f 2 minus and also in case of X C f 2, uh, let me consider X C f 2 as well because here we have uh, more lone pairs and X C f 2, uh, this has 8 electrons, S 2 P 6 electronic configuration. So, we have 8 electrons and 1 electron each is coming from fluorine. So, we have a again 10 electrons, 10 divided by 2 equals 5 is the steric number. And in this case, we have two XEF bonds are there, two XEF bonds are there, and we have this is bonded pair, and three lone pairs are there. So, geometry is again trigonal bipyramidal, XC at the center, So, X C F 2 is geometry is trigonal bipyramidal shape so one can write by using this VACPR theory for any given molecule correct structure and understand the geometry as well as the shapes. So, let us look into the steric number 6. In this one we have 3 cases having no lone pair. When we have no lone pair, uh, example I am going to consider is sulfur hexafluoride. So, sulfur has uh, 6 S 2 P 4 electronic configuration. So, it is contributing 6 electrons and 6 fluorine atoms are contributing 1 electron each. So, we have a total of 12 electrons divided by 2 equals 6 pairs of electrons. So, 6 electron pairs this is our steric number. So, steric number is 6. So, in this one all are bonded pairs. So, the standard geometry is octahedral So, the geometry is octahedral here. Now, let us consider another case where, where we have one lone pair and five bonded pair. Example is IF5. So, let us look into IF5 here. The steric number is 6 IF5. So, they are called interhalogen compounds. There are plenty of interhalogen compounds are there, neutral, anionic as well as cationic. I will be explaining more details about their preparation and all those things when I discuss the group 17 elements. Now, let us look into I f 5. In case of I f 5, the central atom is I giving 7 electrons and then each f is giving 1 electron. So, it becomes 5. So, totally we have a 12 electrons that is which is equal to 6 pairs that is our steric number is 6. So, now out of this one we have 5 I f bonds are there that is bonded pair and then one lone pair will be there then. So, geometry is 
octahedral as usual because the steric number is 6. So first let us make 5 IF bonds, one here, one here, one here, one here, one here. Now the lone pair will come and sit here in one of the axial position. Now if you just look into it, the geometry is octahedral. shape square based pyramid. So, these are the examples where we have a lone pair and as a result we are seeing the square pyramidal shape for some of these molecules having steric number 6 with one lone pair and 5 bonded pairs. Another example is BRF5. Let us look into the last one in the series octahedral molecules with steric number 6 having 2 lone pairs and 4 bonded pairs. Example considered here is XEF4. So, in case of XEF4 again S2P6 electronic configuration is xenon. So, we have uh, 8 electrons and plus 4 fluorine atoms are giving 4 electrons. So, we have a total of 12 electrons that is equal to 6 will be its steric number. In this one we have 2 lone pairs and 4 bonded pairs because we have 4 XEF bonds and 2 lone pairs will be there. The geometry is again octahedral, xenon will be at the center. These are placed here and in the axial position two lone pairs will occupy. So, now the, the geometry of XEF4 is octahedral whereas the shape is square planar except those cases where we come across two lone pairs in the axial position we do not have any examples among main group elements that show square planar geometry. Square planar geometry is seldom shown when we have four bonded pairs. The preferred geometry is tetrahedral. Similarly, one can also look into IF4 minus. In case of IF4 minus, again I is giving IF4 minus, I is giving 7 plus fluorine atoms are giving 4 and plus 1 electron is there. So, 12 electrons are there, but again the steric number is 6. Again, the geometry is octahedral and all the IF bonds will be in the plane giving a square planar shape. The geometry is still octahedral. I think uh, this is all about uh, valence shell electron pair repulsion theory. It is quite successful in predicting the molecular geometries of main group compounds, but only in few cases it fails to predict the shapes of isoelectronic species and also transmetallic compound. That means when we have isoelectronic species and also when we are considering transmetallic metals where we have inactive lone pairs, VSCPR theory does not give a right geometry and shape for those molecules. And another limitation of valence shell electron pair repulsion theory is it does not consider the relative sizes of substituents. And as I said stereochemically inactive lone pairs into the consideration. As a result what happens uh, one needs to look for a different bonding concept for especially explaining the bonding in transmetal complexes. So of course uh, in case of transmetal complexes three theories have been successfully used. One is valence bond theory, another one is crystal field theory and another one is molecular orbital theory. And in case of crystal field theory, we always uh, talk about uh, the ligands and metal ions as point charges and the interaction between the metal and the ligand is purely electrostatic in nature. And if the metal is cation and the ligand is anion, it is ion-ion interaction. If the metal is cation and the ligand is neutral, it is called ion dipolar interaction. But we come across a situation where uh, the metal is neutral and ligand is also neutral. For example, if we consider nickel tetracarbonyl, chromium, 
hexacarbonyl, iron pentacarbonyl where metal is neutral and ligand is neutral. In that case what happens we have to consider the electrostatic interaction of dipolar, dipolar in nature. However, crystal field theory does not explain the electrostatic interaction that exists between dipolar and dipolar species. As a result, uh, crystal field theory fails to explain bonding in uh, metal compounds having metal in their zero valent state. In those cases, uh, in order to explain dipolar, dipolar interaction, uh, some alloyance is made and that is called ligand field theory. So, ligand field theory explains all three kinds of electrostatic interactions and of course, uh, once when we go to more refined method or theory, molecular orbital theory that can explain almost all aspects of all compounds without any controversy or without any problem. Uh, in my next lecture, I will be focusing your attention on another important theory, valence bond theory. Valence bond theory is essentially refined from the valence, uh, valence electron peripersion theory, uh, introducing the concept of hybridization uh, proposed by Linus Pauling. In my next lecture, I will be discussing about the valence bond theory and its application to the compounds of main group elements. Uh, have a pleasant reading and thank you very much. Swayam Prabha, Digital India, Educated India.